I'm Heath Kaiser, the owner and operator of HK Shorthorns. So as we get going here, I just want to dive a little bit into my story. So growing up, my dad always had red Angus cows. Um, and kind of as he told me the story, he'd look around, everybody had, um, you know, black Angus cattle. And he said, well, I don't want to do that. That's boring. Um, so he decided to get into red Angus. That way calving season was a little more exciting. Uh, so I had a little bit of an influence there, I guess, coming in. And then in 2012... I bought my first short horn, and so I was, you know, I would have been 11 at the time, and looking around, I thought, oh, those were cute, and so I, you know, tugged on dad's sleeve and got my first short horn. Uh, she's actually still in my herd now, and I have uh, two daughters out of her and a couple granddaughters that are still back in my herd or ones that I've turned around and sold, so... Uh, that's kind of a little bit of background on me now, uh, running a purebred shorthorn cattle herd. My dad and I own some of those ones together. So uh, it's been quite the journey um, coming. So the Cattleman's Classics, where I bought my first one at, um, 2012. And now for the last five years, I have sold cattle there. Uh, so for me, it's been kind of a fun little circle of life there of um, going down there and getting to meet some of the consigners that have sold. And now I am one of those consigners. Uh, so definitely a, a spot where I feel pretty young. Uh, some of those guys have a lot of gray hair and I'm, <laughs> I haven't quite got there yet, but um, it's been, it's been a lot of fun for me. Definitely quite the journey of kind of getting to explore that. So um, as we dive into kind of the cattle side of things, I wanted to kind of touch on a little bit more of that kind of circle of life aspect. Uh, so for me, it kind of goes into the breeding season. Uh, so that's something where I'm looking at my cows, looking at the calves they've had before um, and what they've been, you know, mated to and then trying to decide what I want to breed them to this year. Um, I haven't got into the embryo transfer um, side of things yet for the cattle people out there. Um, the the costs of that have kind of scared me away from doing it so far. Um, pretty heavily involved in AIing, so that way I can kind of utilize some of those bulls. Um, so then we go into preg checking. So I got the decisions all made, decided what I want to mate everybody with. Um, then we get to preg checking, and of course, there's going to be somebody that comes up open, somebody that didn't get bred. And then it's a decision of what do we do with them. Um, as everybody knows, it's not cheap to run a cow over with no ca or with uh, no calf that's going to have some income coming through. Uh, not a sustainable model doing that. Um, and so I have one of my cows this year, my, my, my best cow came up open, so I have to kind of decide her, I'm probably going to run over. Uh, I have a hard time getting rid of cows. They, they get to have a little bit of emotional attachment for me. Um, and so then we get into there, and then you get into calving. And so it's always about that month before calving for me that I'm, like, really excited because I know what I have coming. And then I'm like, oh, you know, is um, when we ultrasounded them or preg checked them, are they actually pregnant? Are they going to calve? Is the calf going to come out okay? And, um, you know, all, there's all these thoughts running through your head of what's going to happen. Um, and then calving comes. Uh, so that's what this kind of the season we're in right now. Uh, you know, I've been down here at college. I bug my dad about every day of what did we have today? What calves we have? Send me pictures, send me videos. I'm sure he gets kind of annoyed at me, but he enjoys it too. So that's fun. I try to make it home as much as I can. Um, and then from there they go into summer pasture. Uh, so that's kind of always a little bit of a stressful time is trying to figure out what cows are going to go to what pasture and then what bull will be there in the end of the summer uh, to get them rebred again. And then also just kind of the calves as far as um, they aren't as close to home. We can't keep his eye on them. Um, you know, you're really excited about that mating, about that calf, and then you send them out the pasture where anything could happen to them. Um, so that it's, it's a little bit nerve-wracking as well. Um, but then going out there on a summer day and you see the calves running around with their tails in the air and then mom's bellering at them to come back and all the, the little kids, I call them, they're all running around taking off. Um, so that, that's, that's a, a – very good picture for me in the summertime getting to go out and see that um and then it kind of comes comes time to sell those calves uh so for me i'll market my calves at the cattleman's classic which is a little bit um kind of on the fancier side uh for people that might like to take those calves on and show them at shows um and then for kind of the, I guess, the bottom end of the calves, those ones all retain ownership then at our family feedlot. Uh, so that's a, always a kind of a good time, too. You get to um, have the calves home um, and halter break them, which is a, takes a lot of patience uh, getting them halter broke. And you really uh, establish a connection with the calves, uh, which is a lot of fun for me. Um, just kind of getting to, like, have that calf there in front of you, um, let them, you know, smell you, figure out who you are, figure out what you're about, um, and then have that confidence in that calf that you can uh, um, take that on and then share that with somebody else. Um, so kind of through my business, I've been able to do that a little bit uh, this last year with um, – 
with a young girl that I sold one through at the Classic. Um, she's it's her first year showing, um, and actually the um, lady that's in charge of the Classic um, knew that we had a calf there that was uh, you know extremely tame and had been shown before, um, and called the called the the guy that uh, was her father and you know recommended. Um, us our calf to her um, and so he called me and we've been contact and they came early in the week and um, kind of got a feel for her took her out and led her around um, and they ended up buying her then and I was really excited about it um, and it it probably took us about two to three shows before she would go in the ring by herself um, to this day I don't I, she maybe has said a couple words to me two words I must be a scary guy I guess um, so as we've kind of gone, yeah, she'd go into the show ring and she was too scared to go in by herself. So her older sister would go in there with her. Um, and she was just very shy, very scared. Um, and then we kind of got her in and then she was going into the ring by herself, uh, which was kind of scary for me and her dad sitting on the outside watching her. Um, and, um, you know, being a young showman, you, um, kind of have a lot of learning curves there but it was it was really exciting to see that confidence grow in her um and then throughout the summer i was there to help i uh, clipped on the calf and kind of helped her out with different uh shows that they went to and then as they um retired the heifer and then she got bred and then she'll have a calf i think this may um and she has a date down she even corrected her dad when we were talking about it um and so when they were looking for show calves for this year, she kind of looked at her dad and said, well, why can't we show Gigi again? And so she, she didn't want to give Gigi up. Gigi wanted to go to the shows forever. Um, so she'll probably be coming back as a cow-calf pair next year. Um, so moving into this year, uh, we had another calf that came down, and um, Chet, he had been in contact with me throughout the year about it. And so they came down early in the week again, and um, Wanda was the calf this year. And so the Brittany got to lead Wanda around quite a few times, and she said she came up, and she's like, Dad, I want that one. Uh, so we went into the show ring, and they were back there kind of helping us get ready. And so we went in for the sale, and uh, Brittany was the one that actually did the bidding. Uh, so I was kind of in the ring, and my sister was leading Wanda around, and I was staying there. And so I got to watch Brittany uh, bid for her calf then. And then they came back, and her whole family has been around there, her mom and her dad uh, and her older sister. And she was coming on Wanda. Uh, and then they took her home and just happened to pop on Facebook there a couple of days later and had a picture of Wanda laying out in the pen. And she was hugging on her and laying on her and sitting out in the pen with her. Um, so I guess for me, kind of I wanted to really focus on kind of as we wrap up here a little bit um, is that's a, that was a really high point um, for me going to get to see that show. Um, I, I just kind of have the picture painted in mind, went to the classic pop-up show in Kearney, um, and they had the final drive for the champion classic market animal. And her older sister was in the ring with her. It was her older sister with her calf and then uh, the younger sister with Gigi then. And they went in there, and her older sister was champion, and then Gigi got picked as reserve champion. And that smile that was painted on, on her face when she was selected for that, and she got all excited and was, like, jumping around, and Gigi's standing there like, I'm ready to go take a nap. Um, but just just that picture of smile is um, some, something that I will never forget, and kind of knowing that I was there to kind of help them, you know, accomplish that. Um, and so, I mean, obviously that's a really high point in, um, you know, in the business of HK Shorthorns, but obviously there's going to be low points. Uh, I had a show heifer that I showed last year, got her bred, actually got her AI'd, which is kind of rare sometimes for show heifers. Sometimes you have a hard time getting them bred again. Um, had a high, nice heifer calf when I was home. Um, and then about two weeks later, uh, dad just texted me and said, Hey, can you talk? And I said, yeah, sure. And so I called him back and we're talking for a little bit. And then he said, um, well, I don't know how to tell you this, but, uh, but Kate's heifer, Kate's calf died. Went up there the next morning, and uh, you know, and calf was dead. And uh, I mean, I, I know obviously he felt terrible about it. Um, he took him into the vet, and they did the post op on him, and found nothing wrong with the calf. Not sure what happened. Um, just go out there, and there's a dead calf. So, um, very, very much two ends of the spectrum there. Um, so I guess for me, it's kind of as I go about um, my day and kind of coming into this podcast, thinking about what did I want to talk about? Um, it's like, what what sort of thoughts to consume my mind? You know, how often do I think about that show where Brittany, Brittany and Gigi were selected for as their champion? Or how often do I think about, you know, where Kate's calf died or where I had another calf that died over the summer? Um, and so for me, it's just like, where do I, 
um, spend my time thinking about those, you know, um, kind of coming into this this morning, I kind of had the thought of, uh, as I go outside and the weather's sunny, obviously my mind's going to lean a little bit more towards, uh, some of those good thoughts, but maybe when I go home and I have to go check cows at three in the morning and it's four degrees and wind, wind blowing and snowing, probably not going to have those good thoughts on my mind. Probably going to be worried about, you know, is there a calf that's going to die? Um, what's going to happen? So for me, it's, you know, what, what, which one of those thoughts do I let consume? my mind. Um, and I think that's something that's really valuable to a lot of entrepreneurs. There's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. And I think there's definitely spots in, I mean, every day of our life that we have, you know, sometimes those good thoughts are what's in our mind and sometimes those bad thoughts. Uh, and I think it's really important to understand that and recognize which one of those thoughts are kind of happening. Um, and take the time to really realize, you know, is that helping me or is that hurting me? If we're focused on those bad thoughts a lot of the times, it's probably not going to be much of a help. Uh, so I guess for me, that's been a really big help is to take that take that second. Um, you know, where am I at? What am I feeling? What am I smelling? What am I seeing? Um, and really focus on kind of where I am at that moment and really trying to be present uh, and focus on what I'm thinking about. So with that, I'm Heath Kaiser, and you're listening to the Ingler Journey Podcast. Thank you.